today is part three, dirty jobs. It's called dirty hands. Dirty hands. Nobody likes problems. Nobody likes problems. 100% here today. Nobody likes struggles. Nobody, and no one loves the results of sin. I don't. You don't. But guess what? We all have problems. Come on. We all have struggles, and we're all dealing with sin. As long as you're in the skin, you're going to deal with sin. As long as you're alive until you meet the Lord, you're going to have to deal with some stuff in your life. So listen to me. How do we as Christians get through these times? How do you get through? How do you make it? How do we survive when sin is choking the very life out of us? How do you survive that you're so deep in sin right now? And I don't know who I'm preaching to today, but I really believe God's going to set somebody free in this house today. I really believe that the Word's going to go forward, and God's going to pick you up out of the miry clay and He's going to save your soul today. How many times are you going to have to go through life? And how many times is sin going to have to explode in your life before you say, no more? No more. I'm not allowing sin no more to ruin the reign in my life. God has you here today for a purpose. I know somebody may have invited you and praised God for that, but God is bigger than that. And God's got you here for a reason. So you give God your ears today, and I promise you, you'll walk away with clean hands. Clean hands. Turn to your neighbor and say, no more dirty hands. Come on. Come on. No more dirty hands. Sometimes you just got to drop it like it's hot. Sometimes you act like it's hot, man. I got to get rid of that stuff. You know what I'm saying? So we're going to turn that old conservative stuff into some Christian stuff today. If you have your Bible, I want you to turn to Joshua chapter 7. Dirty Hands, part 3 of the Dirty Job series. Joshua chapter 7, verse 16 is where we're going to begin re our reading. I'm reading now the NIV. And so every translation may have a different <laughs> translation. But anyway, you hang with the one that you've got and let God speak to you. Okay, Joshua chapter 7, verse 16 through 23. If you're there, say amen. Here we go. Verse 16, Joshua chapter 7. It says, early the next morning. Joshua had Israel to come forward by tribes. Now you realize, tribes were 12,000 in each tribe. 12,000 people in one tribe. There was 12 tribes, which equaled 144,000 people. It's a lot of people. But he had them come forward tri by tribes. Listen to this. And Judah was taken. Judah means worshiper. Judah means praise. So every time... We go, before we get into battle, guess who's going to open the door for us to be ushered into the presence of God? The tribe of Judah. The tribe of Judah. Verse 17 says, the clans of Judah came forward. And he took the Zerahites, and he had the clan of the Zerahites come forward by families. And Zimrah was taken. Notice he's getting one from each tribe. Joshua, verse 18, and had his family come forward man by man. Good gracious, took a long time. And Achan, the son of Karma, the son of Zimrah, and the son of Zerah, and the tribe of Judah was taken. Verse 19, then Joshua said to Achan, everybody say Achan. He said these words, my son, give glory to God, to the Lord, the God of Israel, and give him praise. See, when, you, when you're a praiser, no matter if you're in the storm or not, you'll praise his name because you know there's victory in praise he says tell listen to this he says tell me tell me what you have done and do not hide it from me no longer verse 20 Achan replied it is false it's true he had a confession here it's true I have what sinned against the Lord and God of Israel and this is what I have done he goes another step this is what I've done y'all hang with me when I saw the plunder of the beauty of the robe of Babylonia, 200 shekels of silver and a wedge of gold weighing about 50 shekels, I covet them. I stole them. I had dirty hands. And I took them. Watch this. They are hidden in the ground inside my tent with the silver underneath. Verse 22, and Joshua sent messengers, and they ran to the tent, and there it was. Oop, there it is. Hidden in the tent. With the silver underneath, they took the things from the tent, brought them to Joshua. And watch this. And all Israelites had spread them out before the Lord. Father God, in Jesus' name, may I preach this word today like it's my last sermon. I pray today, God, you would set my coattails on fire, and I would preach, Lord, like a burning man. 
I pray today, God, as I decrease, you would increase. Help me, dear God, to deliver the word with passion and zeal and fire. Lord, I pray that every person in this house today would leave changed after they hear the word of God. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Lord, we love you. We give you praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. All God's people said, amen. amen. Turn your neighbor and say, don't get no dirty hands. Dirty hands, don't, don't, don't get those. Keep your hands clean. I'm going to give you two things. The first thing is this. There was, there was a problem from Satan. There was a problem from Satan. Y'all hang with me, okay? The number one thing here I found out in the scripture, sin doesn't just affect you. Y'all listen to me. It affects everyone around you. Now listen to this preacher. There isn't such a thing. There is not such a thing as a small sin, a baby sin, or a big sin. All sin will separate you from Jesus Christ. Now listen to me. There are different consequences for different sins. In Old Testament days, if a woman or a man was found in adultery, what they would do, they would take that man or that woman to the high priest, and they would stone that man or woman. There is a different consequence for a different sin, whatever you commit. The Bible says that sin is fun for a season. Y'all watch me. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Sin is fun for a season. But the Bible says when it has fully birthed, when it has fully come to fruition, when it has fully gave birth to the sin, it says it brings forth death. Sin will kill you. Now, I'm going to say this again. This don't get preached on very much in church, but I'm going to say it from the top of my lungs. Sin will kill you. I'm going to say it to this side. Sin will kill you. Sin will mess you up. Sin will keep you, keep you longer than you want to stay. It will make you pay more than you want to pay. It will make you do things you said you would never do. You say, Brian, how do you know? I'm glad you asked because I've been there before. How about you? Everybody's got a testimony of where you came from. Everybody knows what sin has done to you in your life. And not one person will ever stand up and say, Woo, that was it. That was the bomb diggity. That's where I was at. That's who I was. Because I'm going to tell you some sin will mess you up. And it'll mess the pre people you live with up. It'll mess your church up. It'll mess your school up. Sin will mess you up. How in the world, I said this in the first service, I never understood this a day in my life, and I, I probably never will. And this is what you've got to deal with, is my, me being your pastor. I don't understand. If you've got Holy Spirit singing, and you've got Holy Spirit preaching, how in the world can you stand or sit in a church that is filled with the Holy Ghost? And how can you sit there and say, I am okay with where I'm at? How in the world, watch me, listen to me, and don't, don't, hate, don't be hating me. I'm preaching out of the Word. Everybody say, preacher, preacher. Because this is it. How in the world can you cheat on your wife and she's sitting beside you, sitting beside you, sitting beside you, and you've done what you did, and you're here worshiping, raising your hands like this, that is not a God connection. There's a disconnection somewhere. Because a true man of God, in the good times, hallelujah, in the bad times, in the down times, whatever he's at, he'll give God praise no matter what's going on. You cannot live like hell and die and go to heaven. I preach this, and I preach it, and I preach it. But today, it's a little different. Because see, sin will mess you up, and it'll, it'll, it'll mess you up. It'll do things you sh it should not do. But I'm going to tell you today, sin reminds me this is not real. Yeah, thank goodness. Someone asked me this week, he said, how, how can things happen in Boston the way that they're happening? Let me go ahead and tell you. The same way they're happening in Israel right now. Sin kills. As long as there is sin in this world, we're going to have to deal with the bombings. We're going to have to deal with death. We're going to have to deal with these things. So listen to me. The problem with the church is this. They, they're scared of truth. They're scared to preach the word because they think they'll get fired or they think people will come against them. But my God says, if he be for me, hallelujah, who can be against me? If God is rising up in me, he'll stand me up and I can preach it up because, hey, I'm going up. Hallelujah. What I'm trying to say today is this. 
Satan will dress up sin. He'll make sin look good. He'll put a dress on sin. This is not going to be one of my top favorite ten sermons. It probably won't be one of your top favorite ten sermons that I preach. But I'm going to shoot you tight today. I'm going to shoot it like it's a rifle going towards you. I'm going to shoot it not like a shotgun. I'm not going to chase a lot of rabbits today. It's going to be a bullseye. But I want you to listen to me. Either here's what's going to happen. Either you'll take heed to this word and you'll change. Or your heart will start to become very hard. This is a serious sermon here today. You say, Brian, all you do is preach on sin. No, it's not. You just don't come to church very much to hear it then. So what I'm trying to tell you is this. Y'all remember, y'all remember uh, uh, David when he built his temple? He built it tall so he could look down into the temple yards. Y'all remember a young lady by the name of Sheba? Y'all remember her? In the Bible, we've read it all of our life. What happened was he went on top of the roof and he was taking a bath. and looked down and all of a sudden he seen a pretty woman. She was dressed in sin. You say, Brian, really? Really? Listen to me. Just because people look good, act good, and they talk good, they know Scripture, does not mean they're full of God. It does not. Are y'all okay? Y'all keep breathing on me, all right? Because I'm looking at some people sitting there going, it's okay, welcome to church. It's okay. All right, because I'm going to show you here in just a moment what this is. It's sin. This is sin, all right? But y'all remember, he, he was on top of the temple, but all of a sudden he had to tip her on the other side. All of a sudden, he looked down, and all of a sudden, he said, hey, who's that good-looking woman? And all of a sudden, he said, let me introduce myself. I am King David. And all of a sudden, let me, let me go ahead and go a little bit step farther. He said, hey, are you married? She said, yeah, by the way, I've got Uriah in my life. He's my bomb digging. He's my, he's my sugar daddy. He's, he's everything to me. And all of a sudden, man, here's what happened. He said, hey, you know, let's just go out for some coffee. I don't know if they had coffee back then. I guess they did because Hebrews, Hebrews, y'all get it anyway. Um. Y'all will get that here in a minute. That's good, Jimmy. But anyway, he said, hey, let's go out for a little drink of coffee. We go over to uh, Paul's house. He brews, you know what I'm saying? But anyway, um, I can't get that out of my heart. But anyway, uh, they, he took her over. And next thing you know, man, they're in bed together. Next thing you know, she becomes pregnant. Next thing you know, they lose that baby. Next thing you know, he kills Uriah. Y'all see how seeing what it does? Big domino effect. Domino. Do- I'll, I'll just smoke one. Oh, man, we're just good friends. I'm telling you what you're doing. Listen to me. I'm going to give you a good word. You're letting down your spiritual, your spiritual blinds. And what happens when you let them down, you're allowing the enemy to come in. If you're in the skin, you'll never be sin. If you're walking with the devil and holding hands with the devil, you'll never praise him on Sunday. Oh, you may try to, but there won't be a deep praise. You, hey, you can't hold hands with the devil on a Friday and worship God on a Sunday. You can't do it. Somebody praise him. You can't do it. You say, Brian, you're Southern Baptist, and you're supposed to believe in eternal security of the believer. I do, if you're saved. Why do you think on that day they're going to look at God and God says, Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. But God, didn't we cast out demons? Didn't we do this? Didn't we do that? See, here's the deal. They look good, but they didn't have a relationship. Are y'all okay? Uh, turn your neighbor and say, are you still breathing? Ah, God, I had a dream. I don't know, it's been about three years ago, and it's funny how God will remind you. In this dream, it was a big old field, and Christians were on one end, And God was on the other end. And he was sitting there going like this, come, come. But what was happening when the Christians were leaving the world or whatever, they were running toward God. I still don't have a full grasp of this. But there were landmines. There were landmines. They were blowing up and Christians were blowing up. And I said, God, that's kind of, that's kind of cruel. He said, sin is. What I'm trying to tell you, you got to be careful where you step. You got to be careful where you walk. You got to be careful who you hang out with and what you listen to. I'm going to tell you something. If it's not giving God praise, honor, and glory, you can't ride the fence on Sunday and go out and live like a devil on Monday. You got to praise Him. Why do you got to praise Him? Y'all know what I'm talking about. I know this sermon's probably like shock you, but it's so true. It's so true. And you don't hear preaching like this no more. They want to tickle your ears. They want to give you a three-point outline. 
and you walk out and say, boy, preacher was good today, wasn't he? But there's no change. What I'm trying to tell you is this. If God shows up today, which I know he's here, I can feel him. You don't have to walk out the same way you walked in. You can walk out changed and delivered and set free in this house. Watch this. It's exactly what Satan does. He puts, he puts landmines. And I can see Christians in my mind. Well, I really don't love her, but I'm going to go out with her. I made that one. And all of a sudden, man, you get in that tight situation. It's hot in the kitchen. Y'all know what I'm talking about. This is not going to be a PG-13 movie. It's going to be a rated R sermon. And man, you, you take a step. You're like, whoo, made that one. And all of a sudden, you, you take another one. And you try to test the grounds. If the bomb don't go off and it don't explode, you think you're okay because you, we justify our life. We justify our lifestyle. That's what I'm trying to say. I guess I'm just one of these old-fashioned preachers. And that's okay. I guess, man, wrong's wrong and right's right. Black's black and white's white. Premarital sex is wrong. I don't care who you are. Y'all don't get mad at me if you want to. You need to put a ring on it, baby. And if they're good enough to marry, come on now. Y'all ain't preaching like it's good, but it's good preaching. We need to hold each other accountable. We need to live holy and right and give God praise and honor and glory. We need the holiness of God to rise back up in this last hour. We need men to love their wife the way God loved the church. We need women to love their husbands and would die for them the way God did his church. I'm telling you. What if I told you, in Joshua chapter 7, verse 21, it says these words, when I saw, this was, this is just, this was Achan. He said, when I saw in the plunder, in other words, Satan dressed up sin. And all of a sudden, he seen a robe. It didn't belong to him, coach. He went over to that robe. He grabbed the robe, and he picked it up. There was silver and gold under the robe. And all of a sudden, he's like, well, he opened the robe up picked the silver and gold and put all that in that in that robe he covered it up he put it over his back he started walking back to camp see this is camp this is where we worship hallelujah this is where we come together and say god blessed be the name of jesus christ but i'm telling you what if i told you he went back to his camp he took his tent he tore it down think about this jeremy look how much time he invested in sin tore down his tent moved it over dug a hole, and put the robe, the silver, and the gold in a hole. And then he did something crazy. He took his tent and put it back together over the hole. And what God gave me was, was these words. Y'all ready for this? God spoke this into me. You'll never be able to hold the anointing of God with dirty hands. And what's sad about church is we walk into a building, I've done this before, and still Satan wants me to do this. We'll look around at somebody else and we'll say these words, well, they're a little bit worse off than I am. I know where they went last night. I know how they're talking. I know what they're doing. And all of a sudden, we'll justify our lifestyle. And we've got the robe, the gold, and the silver. We've dug a hole and put our dwelling over that. And the next thing you know, we've justified and said, I'm okay, but they're wrong. Huh? So what happens, watch it, let's get, let's have some church. How many of y'all have ever done that before besides your preaching? And the rest of you lying. We're going to have an altar call here in just a minute. Yes, we have. That's, that's a perfect example of where the church is at today. We come to church, we put a beautiful face on, put a beautiful robe on, and we think everything's going good, but inside, you're dying. Preach it. Sin in the camp. Sin in the camp. This is what God said. He said that word tent in the, in the Hebrew means dwelling place. Y'all write that down. Tent means dwelling place. What happened? He took the robe, the silver, and the gold. He dug a hole, put his tent, his dwelling place, back over the gold, the robe, and the silver. So what this means is this. Dwelling place. In other words, he dwelt on sin. 
He dwelt on sin. I just wonder, do you think that's the reason why some of our houses, our tents, our dwellings is not prospering because we're dwelling on sin? Sand, you can dig. You can dig and you can dig it up and see and examine it. But God says, I build my house on rock. On rock. That when the storms come my way and your way, watch this, they're coming. Don't think it's just going to happen in Boston. Let me go ahead and prophesy today. If the Bible is true, which it is, hey, I'm telling you, it's coming to Camelsville. You say, Brian, you should not say that. I'm just telling you what the Bible says in Matthew 24. See, that's the problem with the church. We think that it's never going to happen to us. But I'm telling you, y'all listen to me. That's why we must have what? Clean hands. Clean hands. Now let me give you this when I'm done. A prescription from God. There was a problem with Satan, and now there's a prescription from God. Y'all ready for this? This is going to hurt, but this is going to be true. Here's the sin, right? The thing God gave me with that in this point, I want to give you about a prescription from God, is sin, you need to deal with sin and quit trying to hide it. Listen to me. You need to, you need to deal with what? The sin and quit digging a hole and putting your sin in the hole. Because guess what? It's still, it's still there. It's still there. Believe it or not, I believe God is trying to still tell us that you need to kill the sin before the sin kills you. Do you realize that you can stop that sin right now? You say, Brian, I've tried it before. Yeah, you said, you said it beautiful. You've tried it before. What if I told you that you've got something in you called the Holy Spirit? And that Holy Spirit, according to the Greek, is called the dunamis, exiazo. That means he'll give you the power to get whatever through with everything you're going through right now. You don't have to stay like you are. You say, Brian, are you going to be going to the altar? You, you probably won't beat me this time. See, sin isn't fun. Sin, it's fun for a season. It will not fulfill you. It will not satisfy you. It is a death certificate. So listen to me. I'm just telling you the truth today. If you're living in sin, habitually living in sin, it's going to kill you. You'll never beat that marijuana joint. You'll never beat that pornography. You'll never beat that line of crack cocaine. You say, boy, this is some deep stuff. It's deep. It's so deep that people will turn you off and turn on their life and be so cold-hearted, they'll do what they want to do. See, listen to me. Some of you have had a hand grenade in your hand for a long time. Long time. You've had a hand grenade in your hand. You've been walking around knowing you got sin in your life. But listen to me. Listen to me. But you're refusing to deal with it. You're refusing to deal with it. You're refusing to deal with it. See, some of you, see, some of you have a hand grenade, hand grenade in your hand. And you realize when you pull that pin and you release that lever, you've got 10 seconds to deal with this hand grenade. 10 seconds to, to do, do something. you got to either get away, you got to throw it, you got to do something. I've never seen anybody go like this. Wow, that's awesome. That's the boom. And say, so you know how you know how Satan's been, been doing to me today? He said, I can't believe you're gonna preach a sermon with a hand grenade in your hand. What happened in Boston over the weekend? Well, he's been telling me. But I said, No, 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 well, you're wrong. Let me speak a little truth over this lie. What you're telling me is this: that a hand grenade is gonna kill me. But let me tell you something. I'm gonna say something so profound, it's gonna mess you up here. If you are walking with God. You are full of the Spirit, and it's not your time to die. I don't care if they got five hand grenades in their hand. You will not die. If it's not your time, you will not die. I know I got a witness out there. Some of y'all should have been dead a long time ago. But now, let me declare today, why are you not dead? telling you the truth. You can get ran over by 18-wheeler if you want to. You can get ran over by a Mack truck. 
And if it's not your time to die, you will not die. And I'm going to tell you something. I would, I would hate to take that chance. What if I told you today? What if I done this? Y'all ready? Boom. And I pulled the pin. The pin has been pulled. There's sin in the pen. And you pull the pen. You got your hand on the release. And what if I did this today? I guarantee you they would not be sitting there. They would, I mean, hit, punch, bite, fuss, cuss. They'd do something, wouldn't they? Now, so one of them may get up and go like this. Where's Mark at? Where's Kessinger at? Come here, Mark. you got to help me, man. Mark said this morning, he said, well, I'm just going to tell you the truth. He said, you throw that thing at me. He said, here's what I'm going to do. Stand right there. You ready? <laughs> hey, that is so, look at that. No, that's good, thank you. This is awesome. God gave me another point after this one, man, I'm telling you. That's exactly what we do as Christians. Look at it like this. Oh, oh. And we just keep throwing sin everywhere. Instead of doing this, I know it's coming. I know the pen's been pulled. All it says you got to do is release the handle. And here's what we do. Instead of throwing it to somebody, get rid of it. Get rid of that stuff. Get away from that stuff. Get away from it. Amen? So I guess my question today is this. Here was God's prescription. Y'all not going to like this, but it's so true. Here was God's prescription for if you get that hand grenade. If you're in some things you should not be in. Go in places you should not go. Here's what he said. Y'all ready for an answer? Be crazy for me to preach about this and not give you an answer. Number one is this. What's God's prescription to dirty hands? Be truthful and honest. Look at me. Be truthful. Quit lying. I never thought I'd have to stand up in church and say, man, listen, drugs will kill you. And I know, I know we got people in here today. Now, I want to be sensitive with this, but also I want to help you. You need help. You need help. You listen to me. You need help. You got to be truthful and you got to be honest. Joshua chapter 7, verse 20 said these words. Achan replied, it is true, I have sinned. It is true, I have what? Sinned. Number two, don't hide the sin. Don't hide the sin. And if everybody's honest, guess what? We've had the pen pulled in our life. We've played with it and stuff. And man, we've handled it and we've messed with it. I have, how about you? You got to quit looking around saying, Hey, he's talking about you. I'm, ta I'm talking to me, to you, personally. Me, to you, personally. So, man, here's the deal. The second thing was don't hide it. And the third thing was deal with it. Be honest. Be truthful. Y'all ready? <laughs> don't, don't hide the sin. Don't dig a hole and put the sin in the hole and then dwell on it. You know the reason why some of you can't get over your past? It's the sin still in the hole. The sin is still in the ground. You've not took your dwelling. You've not took your life. You're still blaming your mama, your daddy, your granny on what they've done to you. Watch this. Oh, that's a good preaching right here. You're blaming everybody around you. But can I tell you, if you're born again and you're saved and you've been delivered, dig the sin up. Look at it. Deal with it. And God will set you free. Man, there's things in my life I could blame people around me all day long. I could. I could blame you for a lot of things. But I've read the Bible. The Bible says that I am the under-shepherd of the most high shepherd. 
So that means this. If God gives me a word, whether you like it or not, the, the, the humbleness of leadership now will hold me accountable, number one. Don't, mean to, don't let me do something crazy. You've got to hold me accountable. But if it's coming from the Word of God, backed up by the authority of God, there is something called the head of the church. And people don't like this. They, they, they don't like preaching like this. You know why? Because it steps on everybody's toes. But the bottom line, according to Hebrews 13, Brother Howard, one day me and you and these deacons are going to stand before God and we're going to give an account on how this church has been ran. So you may not like the way things are being handled, but guess what? <laughs> Thus saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. So my prayer is this. Be truthful, be honest, don't hide the sin, and deal with the sin. So my prayer is this. Come on, praise team. Y'all come. You guys come. This is real. This is as real as it's going to get. Only you know what you have done. Between you and the Lord, right? This section, oh, between you and the Lord. You don't have to come tell me the, the veil has been rent. I don't want to know your stuff, to be honest with you. I got enough stuff in my life. I ain't, I, you know what I'm saying? I can't hear him. Tell him. But here's what I'm saying today. The pen is pulled. My hand is on the trigger. This section over here, y'all ready? Donnie, catch this. What's this section going to do? What's this section going to do? Catch this. What's this section going to do? Find it, man. It's going to go off. <laughs> What's this section? Look at that. It's on you right now. It's you. It's around you somewhere. I've seen it. She said, who? <laughs> there it is. There it is. Watch this. There you go. Now, what's this section going to do? What's this section going to do? She's going to put her body. Listen to this. Let me help you real quick. You're getting ready to die. All right. Here's, here's, listen, I'm going to stay right there. It's okay. Because I'm going to make a teaching moment out of this. I understand what her, her, her method is. She's going to save everybody. Can I help you all real quick? You can't help nobody. She may try. Some of y'all have been praying and crying over your children, over your babies. Watch this. You ready? That's between God and them. You can lay on the hand grenade all you want to. I'm glad you do, but here's the deal. No matter if she even put her body on it, if y'all are still here, guess what's going to happen, Brenda? They're going to get you. It's spread. Now, I understand what she did. I really do. And I praise God for people that will lay on something like that and take the pain for a lot of people. But no matter what, it affects me because it affects you and you're my sister in Christ. You see what I'm saying? And I praise God for people like that. But the bottom line is this. There comes a time. You've got to go to your tent, your dwelling. There comes a time when you got to say, all right, here's what's going on. I don't like it. This is, but this is true. This is true. You got to dig it up. You got to dig up your past. And you got to what? Deal with it. Y'all with me? Hang with me two more minutes. Don't you dare let Satan come in here and just start distracting you. Because that's exactly what he'll do. He'll try to come through this church service. And all of a sudden, the spirit of sleepiness will come over you. All of a sudden, you'll be sitting there, and man, you'll be getting the spirit of distraction all over you. What I'm telling you, there comes a time. You got to quit blaming your past. You got to quit blaming your mama. And you got to quit blaming your daddy. I had to quit myself. And man, you got to look at your problem and say, you know what? I know what's going on with me. I know what I need to do. And then you got to what? Deal with it. Deal with it with your sin I hear this all the time especially at church well they hurt me y'all yo, can I be honest with y'all I've been pastoring for 16 years man Christians will hurt you 
Christians will shoot the wounded. But that does not dictate, hallelujah, that does not dictate my praise. That does not dictate my preaching. That does not dictate anything about me. Because I'm here for the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Hallelujah. Do it. We're going to do that. Here we go again, Keith. Get up there, man. Somebody finally got it. Somebody finally got this message. After 10 people died. That's the way it goes. We don't deal with it. You hear what he said? I got to take this to the cross. I'm not handing it to Stuart. I'm not handing it to you. I'm not handing it to Lindy. I'm not handing it to Brother Manuel. I'm. Y'all got this now? I'm going to deal with my hand grenade. I'm going to deal with my sin. I'm going to deal with what God is doing in me. And once that happens, and you quit blaming everybody around you, you'll what? Be set free. Elkhorn, great job today. Great, great job in this house today. But here's the thing. The pen has been pulled. It's been exposed. And either you can sit there and say, Brian, I'm okay. I'm all right, man. Maybe next week. That's what most people do. I'll see how this week goes. And surely to goodness it'll get better. What if I told you your answer is here right now? Quit running. Deal with it. Look it in its eyes. And say, no, 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 no. If God be for me, who can be against me? No weapon formed against me shall prosper. And every tongue that rises against me shall cease at the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So here it is today, right now. Y'all ready? This altar is open. (laughs) The pen has been pulled. It has been thrown. It has been released in your life. What are you going to do with it now? Husbands, we're going to do with it. Wives, we're going to do with it. Youth group, we're going to do with it. Take it to the cross and deal with it.